force people to be sincere, Jeremy. If you did, then it wouldn't be sincere, true? So if that's in the word itself, could anybody be forced to be a Muslim? If that's a requirement, you can't be forced. It's explained clearly in a short statement in the Quran. La ikraha fi din. There is no compulsion in the way, the way of Islam. Has to be sincere. For who? Only for him. The same God that created Adam, the same God that created all of us, the same God that Abraham called people to worship, the same God that Moses trusted, the same God that Solomon and Daoud, David, were praying to, calling upon, the living God, the same God that Jesus Christ, peace and blessing be upon him, called the people to worship. That's the same God that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, called the people to, to worship. So, in this sense, when I tell people, that I'm a more of a Christian now than I was before is because I really believe in Christ the way he said he was. Not what a preacher told me. Not what I read in a book, but exactly what Jesus really said. And how do I know what he really said? I took it from the Quran, not the Bible. Because the Bible is only there in translations. It doesn't exist anymore in the original. Quran is still original. In Quran today, Right now, you can read what Jesus really said. Translation, he said, Worship your God and my God, your Lord and my Lord. By the way, that's also in the Bible. But it's in the Quran. And this is why I have no problem saying it. He said it. I agree. And if he said that, then how would I worship him? Huh? Never thought about it that way. makes you really think. Especially when you look at the story of Gethsemane. Many people have seen that picture, you know that famous picture where there's a, he's by a big rock and he's looking up and this light is coming down. Have you seen that picture? He's praying, right? This is what it represents because it says in all four Gospels that he's praying to God. Let this cup pass from me, meaning I don't want it to happen, but then even so your will be done. Who's with God's will. That's Islam. Do God's will on earth as it is in heaven. That's what Islam means. So if you're like this, God, I don't want this to happen, but I will accept whatever you give. Then you've got your fifth word, peace. It means to be in peace with whatever God wills for you. Follow that? Because you said, well, here, I'm turning my life over to you, God, do whatever you want to do. As long as I win all the, uh, the races, I win the gambling, I get a lot of money, I get, you know, no, 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 no. It means that whatever happens after that, I'll be okay with it. And I'll understand that somewhere down the line it's going to pay off better than what I wanted for myself. That's Islam. That's what it means. If you understand that, you can understand that was the real message of Christianity. Regardless of what you want to call it, forget about that. Forget about Arabic, Aramaic, the languages that were popular at the time. But just think about your own heart inside of you. That's yours. You've been dealing with it just like all right. everybody in this room is the same way, by the way, in that respect. Every one of us, we're dealing with how we feel in our heart. We're dealing with the way people treat us. We're dealing with the way that we want to treat other people. We're dealing with that all the time. And these transactions going on between us and others, this is the daily life called the Hayat to do, the life of this world. But when I turn this over to him and then say whatever else happens after that, that's, that's by his choice, then and only then have I really achieved my purpose. And some people might ask, well, what's the purpose of life? Can you come here, Jeremy? It's a tiny gift, but it's something. It's nice to meet you. How old are you? 27. Are you really? Yes. Well, I'm 
mashallah. This guy looks like he's no more than 20, you know that? Yeah. <laughs> now you tell me I look young too. <laughs> I want you to have this, okay? And I'm gonna tell you something about a pen. It has a purpose. Now, because I gave it to you, you'll probably think, well, I'd like to keep this pen, right? So if somebody said, can I borrow your pen? I want to write something. You'd say, yeah, but you'd stand there and wait for them to get done and go, well, you know, come on, give it back, right? And that's because it has a purpose. But whenever it runs out of ink, throw it. We toss them every day. We throw away pens. Don't write. Why? They don't serve their purpose. What is the purpose of a human being? Now we know, because it said it in the Quran real clear, in Surah al darya Chapter 51, verse 56, very clear. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنْ وَالْإِنْسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدْنُ By the way, did you imagine that how many people could answer the end of what I started? <laughs> Any country I go to, if I start these verses, you'll find that people can answer it. 1.8 billion people in the world, they know it in the original language. There's no other book like the Quran, but that's not our subject. Talking about purpose. In this ayah or verse of the Quran, Allah says, I did not create you guys, the humans and the jinn, for any other purpose than to worship. Worship. But worship God alone without partners. But you have a choice. You don't have to. But it's a horrible choice. Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, told us nobody's going to stay in the hellfire. Nobody will remain there forever. No. Except those who refuse to leave. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu who would refuse to leave the hellfire? He said, those that hear the message today and refuse to hear are refusing it on the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. So what we see is that we have a purpose, and if we do it, we're successful. If we don't, it's not hard for Allah to throw us away. Not at all. Keep that. And by the way, can I ask you something? Sure. And you don't have to answer me, by the way. I'm just from me, you know. Is there a God? I believe there is. Do you have any doubts? I've had doubts before, but uh, I was I was Christian, or my family was Christian, and I've gone back and forth throughout time, thinking there was and there wasn't. But we've all been through that. I know preachers, and I'm not joking, by the way. I know preachers who told me they're not really sure there is a God. Priests said, "I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't know." You know why? Because whenever you try to reconcile some of the teachings in various churches, it gets kind of crazy. For instance, the very basic one, the devil. We know there's a devil. We even know his name, Zibelis, right? Yeah. But in some religions, they teach that there's a war going on between God and the devil. The forces of evil against the forces of good. Kind of like Star Wars or something, the dark side, you know, right? Islam, it doesn't exist. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no might. There is no power. There is no other source of energy except from Allah. The only reason there is somebody called the devil is because Allah willed it to happen. And the only reason that you and I are here right now is because he willed it, not anything else. He is not good at judging us. Allah is not judging you and I based on what he will. He's basing it on what we want to happen. It's all about your desire. It's all about your niya, sah? It's all about your intention. If you have a good intention in your heart, that already counts with him. So this is what Islam is really about. And it is not something you jump into. It's not something you just say, oh yeah, what, today and then uh uh tomorrow. It doesn't work like that. <coughs> it's very bad for a person to go into Islam and then leave it. 
because they're making it more difficult the next time they want to come back. There's a lot of damage that's caused by that. So when a person is sure they're running against God, the next question I would have for them would be this. Do you want a relationship that he wants or one that you want to make up? You got the right answer. That's Islam. That's what Islam means. The Arabic word. I'm just talking about the Arabic word now. That's what it implies from the beginning. When Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu peace be upon him, called his people to this, they understood Arabic real clear. What he said, La ilaha illallah. That's a very simple thing to say. La ilaha illallah. But it was such a profound statement to his people. They were angry. They were going crazy. Because basically he was telling them, give up the material world. Don't have any other gods. Don't have things that you trust over him. And if he wants you to be a street sweeper, a ditch digger, a guy that cleans the toilets, that's what he wants you to do. You don't come up with, well, I think I should be a king. I think I should be a prince. I, I should be. No. You take what he gives you and you say, Alhamdulillah. Sa? Are you paying attention? You know I'm old, right? I like being old in the slant. You know why? They give me big respect. I get away with murder. <laughs> So, Jeremy, the two things that you just confirmed to us are very positive. And we're, if you don't mind, maybe I think we should make some drop for him. <coughs> Allah give him Daya. To Jeremy, I mean, Allah give him the highest and best, best guidance and give him the opportunity to see clearly the true path. And then, listen carefully, and then make us be the kind of people that he can trust to show him the real Islam. I mean, I mean, yeah, you know what that meant, right? Yeah. I'm blaming us for not taking good care of our Muslim brothers in the past. We have to do better. I have to. Who brought you here? Bring right here, Muhammad. Come here, Muhammad. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> Amazing story, and uh, yeah. like this guy right here, I couldn't be more grateful every single day. He stuff. has my last name, right? But we never met. But he came to Islam, mashallah. <laughs> Four months. Stand up. Everybody see Brandon. This is Brandon Estes. I love that name. You know. <laughs> By the way, it came from old Farsi. Ustad means teacher or professor. Come on. You invited us, man, so you got to put up with it. Appreciate it. MashaAllah. I want you to meet my new friend, Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. How you doing? You live here? Yes, I do. He lives here. But where do you live? Right across the street over at uh, Holly Hall. Okay. Yeah. You're very close. Yeah. MashaAllah. Where do you live? Lake Conrad. Oh, you're too far away, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need a visa to get over there. <laughs> Jeremy, from what you've heard tonight and what you've seen, what's your take on being a part of these kind of people and hanging out with them? What do you think? I think it's, I feel like it's the right thing for me to do. Um, and I'm, by the way, I'm, I'm not trying to push anybody into anything. I, I don't want that. But if you like the idea, I will tell you something. 
I'm not going to tell you everything because that, that sounds too much like a sales pitch. What you hear, what I know. Well, I will tell you this one thing. To go to the next level from where you are in your heart and your mind right now is one real simple thing. It's one step. There's two steps, but it's one step. It is to testify clearly out loud that I swear there is no God except one God only to worship. That's your first step. Would you have a problem doing that? No. All right, then repeat after me. I swear. I swear. There's no God to worship. There's no God to worship. Except one God. Except one God. Allah. 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 That's it. Now, in Arabic, uh, same thing. Same thing. This is what we do in Arabic. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Anlaha. Anlaha. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's one step. There's a door that you're entering into right now. And it's opening up. That's the name of the first chapter of the Quran is the opening. And this is what you're doing. You're actually literally doing this with your heart, with your mind, with your soul. Everything is going in on this. The second thing takes a little bit of consideration here because it is to say that Muhammad is the true messenger of God confirming all the previous messengers on what they really called to, which is what you just said. None of them called to worship me because I'm God. None of them said worship a rock, a stick, a stone, a bone. All of them were saying the same thing. Worship God without any partners. And he told us, Muhammad told us, I saw, that more than 124,000 prophets came, but we only know the name of about 26 or 20. But there were many, and they had all said the same thing, la ilaha la la. Yep. And then, so the second part, if you confirm this, by saying that I swear that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, it means that I'm going to take the message the way he delivered it. Because he explained to us about the worship that we do, like we're here now, about the fasting, about the once in a lifetime to make a trip and pilgrimage, it's called the Holy Land to Mecca. And, but more than anything, than these five pillars we talk about, the charity and so on, there's something that's even bigger, and that's to have the best possible relationship with the human beings that you can have. The opposite, this is, by the way, this is the direct opposite of what the news tries to show Islam. If you guys, if, if me too, if we would just show real Islam, we'll prove those guys are liars. We have proven they're liars as soon as they see Muslims live a true Muslim life. Because there's no way that we could be representing all the things that they're saying. <coughs> Simple as that. Anyway, back to the subject. So if you're ready to say, okay, I'm going to step by step, you still, everything else is still going to be one step at a time anyway. But if you're ready to say that, then it's real simple. I swear that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. You ready for that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I swear. I swear. Muhammad. Muhammad. Is his messenger. Is his messenger. Hello. Ashadu. Ashadu. Anna Muhammad. Anna Muhammad. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Perfect. Allah. Allah. Congratulations, Jeremy. Now, is when I get up. I gotta get over here and get the first hug, man. <laughs> I know everybody here wants to hug you, by the way. Don't break his ribs. Okay, take it easy. You know, while these brothers are hugging you and congratulating you, I will be telling you some amazing things that just happened to you on that spot right there. Everything from the day you were born until this moment has been erased except for your good deeds. Between you and Almighty God, you have no problem. He has accepted you into the fold of His way. In the Dina, in the Lahim Islam. It means the only way with Allah is the way of surrender and submission to Him. And you just did it. So it means He's forgiven all the mistakes. And our prophet, Muhammad said, when you do that, it's as though you just came out of your mother. 
you are reborn. And that's where the Christians are talking about being reborn. Literally, you are like that. So when you go home tonight, be sure when you take a bath or shower that you see the water going down off of you. That's the old me. That's the old sins. It's gone. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm a new person. Alhamdulillah. 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 Also, you have a new thing called direct connect with your Lord. It's called connection, not prayer. We pray in the Salah, but the Salah is the actual connection itself. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so now we're just about ready right now to do a Salah, and this will be your first Salah. And because he's praying with us, and we really hope Allah is going to accept from all of us now, right? So uh, I, want to, I want to just tell you a real quick little prayer that you'll learn many as you go along. But this first one is a really big deal. The very first one is just say, Allahumma. Yeah, let me, where's that mic? Yeah, hold on a second. I should have done this a while ago. There we go. Allahumma. Allahumma. Ya Rabbi. Ya Rabbi. Give Hidayah. Give Hidayah. To Yusuf Estes. To Yusuf Estes. <laughs> <laughs> and all of us. And to all of us. Amen. I got my commission up front. <laughs> Please give us guidance. <laughs> <laughs>